I know a lot of you have been asking about fluoroscopy imaging and ways to figure out where the barium is sitting. So here's just a quick review on the fluoroscopy positions and imaging that you might see. I'm going to start this off with the body habitus info because I think body habitus is really important with um, stomach position, gallbladder position, and colon position. So reviewing your body habitus is important because you know should know how the body habitus is affecting where the anatomy lies. Your hypersthenic patient is your big patient. They have a very large belly. This belly pushes everything up high and out to the sides or high and transverse. So you'll notice that the gallbladder is pushed way up high and off to the side. The duodenal bulb is also very high. Um, it's at the level of T11, T12. The large intestine is also pushed up. The transverse colon is way up here. So if you're looking at anatomy wise, your hypersthenic patient, everything is going to be pushed up and away. Your sthenic patient is your average patient, um, and they're more midline um, and middle of the row. So their gallbladder is at T12, L1. The duodenal bulb is around L1, L2. And then the large intestine, you can see how um, different the flexures look. And the left flexure is almost always higher than the right in this type of anatomy. And then the asthenic and hyposthenic are a lot of times combined. This is your more slender patient. They have a longer torso. They also have um, a stomach, which is shaped um, in a J-shaped stomach. The gallbladder is really low and close to midline. So it's really down and in. So the gallbladder is at L3, L4, just above the iliac crest. Your duodenal bulb is at L3, L4 also. And the large intestine um, is very low in the abdomen as well. What if it's just a picture of the stomach itself? So knowing these body habitus can help you figure out where the anatomy is lying. If you look at this first one, the stomach, it looks sideways, right? It's lying transverse. The duodenal bulb is way up here in the T11, T12 range. This one is a little bit lower down in an L2. You can see the shape of a J, the J-shaped stomach and the L3, L4 location. So this is your hypersthenic patient, your massive patient, which everything got pushed up and out. The sthenic is your more average, and then your hypo or asthenic is this long and down and in. So those are helpful for your upper GI imaging as well. So you know your upper GI uh, is focused on the stomach, and the fundus itself is really the indicator of the patient position or what's in the fundus, I think is more helpful. But Understanding how the fundus is positioned to the rest of the anatomy is important. So the fundus sits posteriorly to the body. So the fundus is kicked back where the body is forward. So if your patient is laying supine, the fundus will be closer to the spine than the body. And when we're talking about barium and air, that's helpful. Your common positions would be either supine or prone. There are two oblique options, RAO, which is your anterior oblique and is a 40 to 70 degree oblique or the LPO and it's 30 to 60. The larger the patient, the larger um, the degree of oblique. And then there's a right lateral as well. When we're talking about supine or AP stomach positioning, some of the indicators that you can look for are what has air, what has barium, and how does the spine look? So I call this abs. Um, I don't have them, but we're going to use those. The spine, when it has spinous processes coming straight down the middle, is going to be either supine or prone. So I know this patient is either supine or prone position because the spine is a true AP. Then I'm going to evaluate what if my fundus has barium or if my fundus has air. And I know barium is a solid liquid. It's heavy, right? Anything heavy or fluid is going to float to the lowest point. So when your patient is supine, that fundus is sitting back farther towards the spine. The body is raised up. It's going to collect the air. When you're supine, 
barium flows into the fundus because it's the lowest point, air rises into the body. So this is your supine. When you're prone, it's reversed. So you've flipped your patient over. Now the fundus is closest to the spine. It's raised up, air rises. So air will be in the fundus. Barium, heavy liquid, is gonna flow into the body. So this is your prone image because it has air in the fundus. When you're in an oblique, we're gonna use our same abs. We're gonna look at spine, air, barium. I know when I see Scotty dogs in the spine that my patient is in oblique position. We're also not seeing spinous processes coming down the middle, right? So you know this patient has to be in oblique. The same concept of how the barium sits in the fundus works for these. When you are supine, remember the barium sat in the fundus, LPO. When you're prone, air was in the fundus, REO. So if you have an oblique spine and barium, you'll be able to figure these out. Lateral, I think the spine is the easiest um, way to figure this out. If it looks like a lateral lumbar spine, it's a lateral position. So look at your vertebrae. Do they look lateral? Excellent. And the focus here is the retrogastric space, so the space behind the stomach. Easy peasy. So again, we're gonna look at these. Is this RIO? Is it LPO? Well, I can see a little bit of the spine here. I can't see all the way to the middle. It's kind of cut off, but I can see the elongation of the rib cage and also the connection of the ribs to the vertebrae. So I know this is an oblique. I have air in the fundus. So I know the patient has to be in a prone oblique. My only option is RIO. Same goes for here. Barium in the fundus, LPO. Prone or supine? How's the spine look? Spinous process is coming straight down the line on both. Okay, this patient's either supine or prone. If they're supine, laying back, barium goes into the fundus, lowest point. Prone, air rises, air in the fundus. So this has to be the prone. And then barium swallow. I only focus on one position for barium swallow. I know there's more listed on the specs, but really the REO is the only one I focus on. Barium swallow is focusing on the esophagus. All right, so your REO drinking, where the patient is taking big swallows while you're making your exposure, you're gonna try and fill the esophagus with barium. You're gonna put the patient in an REO, so the esophagus is going to move off the spine in between the spine and the heart shadow. If you're not rotated enough, it'll look like this, where the esophagus is over the spine. So they have to be kicked up a little bit farther. Um, and then the patient is just going to drink barium and keep swallowing as you um, make your exposure. So barium swallow, REO, is the only one that I would worry about. Um, and then I'll be back for small bowel.